So you got this Discord message which said there's a free game if you click on the link, and you did. Something loaded, but nothing happened, you kind of forgot about it, and the next day you wake up and your Discord is hacked, so is your Bitcoin wallet, and all your money is missing. How did that happen? Well, today we're going to find out. We're going to take a look and find out how hackers actually managed to steal your information. I want to start off this video by saying thank you to our sponsors, Intizer Analyze, for giving us a platform to conduct these in-depth investigations, because believe it or not, it is actually pretty hard to track these threats in the wild. In this case, we're going to talk about an info stealer called Redline. Now, I was personally attacked by this, and I've been getting a lot of emails which have samples, different variants of this particular threat involved. Before we do a deep dive of this though, I just want to show you how easy it is to actually steal passwords from a compromised system. So over here we have a tool called Web Browser Pass View. And as you can see, apart from the stuff that's going to be blurred out, it's showing us the different addresses that we have accessed and saved and the associated usernames and passwords. And this is for all browsers, Firefox, Chromium, Internet Explorer, Edge, whatever you use, it doesn't matter. If you're saving passwords in your browser, they can be very easily compromised, which is why I would strongly recommend using a password manager and never saving your passwords directly in the browser. So if you're wondering how is it possible for a hacker to get my login credentials, well, if you're saving your passwords on your devices and they're not encrypted, anyone who has access to the device can read that data. Hopefully showing you this tool will give you an idea of how simple it is and throw some caution to the wind. As for the malware itself, it seems to masquerade within the .NET framework as you can see, the directory is pretty convenient. It's something where you wouldn't necessarily be alarmed if you saw something from C, Windows, Microsoft, .NET framework running on your system because you think, well, it's just a regular module. Maybe it's updating or something, but this is the info stealer. And if we go into detect and hunt, which is one of the new cool features Synthesizer has added, you can see that we have a private loader and a malicious library there. You can see the registry key that's being written. But most importantly, you can see the IP address associated with this malware. So this is likely the node where all of this data is getting exfiltrated to. So once it's captured the login data that it wants, it's going to send it over the internet to the attacker. Now what I'm going to do is try to look this up in Vars Total and try to pull up a graph for it. And as you can see, we've got this IP address in Russia that is associated with multiple redline stealer variants. If we want to be more specific, we can even look up IP and then just copy and paste this. And boom. So all your data is directly going to St. Petersburg in Russia. Isn't that great? Now looking at the malware, it is quite sophisticated, so it is going to detect sandbox execution, it has process injection capabilities, and most importantly, it checks the version of BIOS. So this is a way in which a lot of malware avoids detection in a sandbox. So if you're running a sample in VMware or VirtualBox, it's going to have a different BIOS than a hardware manufacturer. So a lot of the times the malware will query that information and then not run if it detects a VMware or VirtualBox BIOS. It also detects VirtualBox through the presence of a registry key, and it's of course obfuscated and unpacks itself once in memory. Now it definitely has data exfiltration as part of its components, but we're not able to see that likely because of the obfuscation, but we can see that it does query the registry. If we take a look at the behavior inside Sandbox, you can see that the process is launched, and then it uses servicehost.exe communicating to this IP address via this port. I have been noticing a lot of Redline Stealer samples recently, so I really want you to watch out for that. This one in particular seems to have 33 out of 69 detections in Vars total, but I've seen them with much lower detections, and sometimes they will have an absurdly large file size, like 700 megabytes, and that's how they're going to evade the scanner of your antivirus program. So again, something to keep in mind when choosing your antivirus program is whether or not it can scan things in memory and do behavioral detection. And that's why I kind of emphasize that when I'm testing, because without that, a sample can evade the scanner just by being large in file size. 
Now, hopefully, being viewers of the PC Security Channel, none of you store your passwords in the browser, but if you do, here's your warning, never do that. But to make a broader point, I think it's important to not have a compromised system in any case, because even if you're using cookies or tokens to log in, even if they're encrypted, there are ways in which hackers could manipulate the system to get your login credentials or even just log into your account on your system. By the way, 2FA is not immune to it because the hackers can simply make you log into your own account. By logging you out, they can just delete the cookies and that's going to force you to log in. And if the info stealer is present, it can just log all the keystrokes and therefore get the 2FA credentials before the server gets it from you and then they can log in before you do. So there are a lot of nasty things that can happen. So it's very important to take the security of your system seriously. And I think a lot of people don't realize the real threat from malware does not come from viruses that are going to destroy your system or render it unusable, destroy the BIOS, something crazy like that. That's very unlikely, almost never happens because there's no benefit to the attacker. But this is a much more realistic scenario that actually affects a lot of people. One in five people I know have been affected by something like this, so you really should watch out. And there's plenty of incentive for hackers to get access to as many hacked accounts as they can as people's online presence becomes more and more relevant. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you protect your system. And please like and share this video so other people also know that something like this exists before it's too late. If you want to get into threat analysis and look at such samples yourself, consider checking out Intizer Analyze and their new detect and hunt feature. You can go to analyze.intizer.com and get a free account. Of course, I'm using the Enterprise Edition that has all the features, so if that's something you're interested in, feel free to contact them. Let me know your stories if you've ever been hit by similar threats in the comments below. Go to discord.tpsc.tech to join our Discord if you want to stay up to date. If you'd like to get your business tested or evaluated using our testing methods, feel free to contact us at tpsc.tech. Thank you so much for watching. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.